Another important technique we have to learn is how to pipette aseptically. Now what I would recommend in the lab, since you're going to be working in groups, so there's less chance of spillage, is that one person be responsible for handling the tubes and doing the aseptic technique part of that. Removing the cap, flaming the tube, handing it to the person doing the pipetting after they remove the bacteria, flaming the tube, putting the cap back on. And then the other person can be responsible for doing the actual pipetting. Uh, part way through the experiment, you can always change places and everyone gets practice pipetting. But what I'm going to demonstrate is how to do the transfers uh, individually. <clears throat> so we have our sterile one milliliter pipette that we've removed. Remember, once we remove it, we can't lay it down. We can't touch it because that can contaminate us. We have to hold it in the air. We have it in our blue filler, the one we use for a one mil pipette. And remember, when you turn the knob towards you, that's going to suck the liquid up. And when you uh, push the knob up like that, that's going to dispense it. So what we're going to do to start out then is remove some bacteria. And so again, in aseptic technique, we would flame the tube. Then we're going to put the pipette all the way into the bottom. Now again, when we're pipetting, we want to make sure we don't suck up air, just the liquid. So we want to make sure the pipette goes all the way to the bottom. We're going to remove one milliliter of the bacteria by drawing it up to the zero on the pipette by turning the knob downwards. And now we have our one mil out. And then we flame the tube. We put the cap back on and we are ready to transfer the bacteria to the next tube. Now if you keep the uh, pipette horizontally, there's less chance of dripping too also, so kind of keep it horizontal while you're doing that. So again, you would remove the cap of the tube you're going to dispense the bacteria in, flame the tube, then we put the tip of the pipette in the uh, tube, and in this case now we want to be able to see the bottom of the pipette when we're dispensing. So we're going to turn the knob upwards, which lets the liquid flow out, watching the bottom of the pipette so that we can see when all the liquid has left. Then again, we would flame the tube and put the cap back on. Now, you're going to be doing a serial dilution during lab where we're going to be transferring bacteria from tube to tube to tube. And so it's very important whenever we get ready to remove bacterium from one tube and put it into the next tube that we mix the bacteria up thoroughly so they're evenly distributed. And what we use for that primarily is called a vortex mixer. And uh, the mixers will be all set up. These are self-activating so that when you put the tube in, it starts up the vortex mixer. And if we mix that for about 10 or 15 seconds, that'll evenly distribute the bacteria through the tube. So here's the tube we just added the E. coli to. Before we take any bacteria out of this tube, we're going to put it in the vortex mixer. Uh, kind of hold the tube so you're holding the glass and the cap, and then just put down gently, and it'll start vortexing. And we're going to do that for, like I said, about 10 or 15 seconds. and then when you release it, the vortex mixer stops. Uh, one other thing to be careful with, if you put it in there and you notice it's getting too high in the tube, don't let it vortex out, just raise it up so that it stops going up any higher. So that's the basic technique for doing the pipetting aseptically.